So, there's a new USB, USB 4. It's going to be coming in a couple of years' time, and I wanted to take a little chance to talk to you guys about it. What's good, what's bad, and what's going to be coming up about it. The bad bits at the end, so brace yourself. So, straight off the bat, USB 4 is going to be the fastest out there of the standard of USB that's ever existed. It's going to be a number of features and functionality of USB 4 that's already present in current forms of USB, only a lot better. It's going to be backwards compatible, which I'm pleased to confirm. Let's face it, if it wasn't, that would be a real crying shame. And it will be able to supply power down that cable, just like USB 3.1 Gen 2. The speeds out there of USB 4 are going to be 40 gigabits per second in the USB Type-C to Type-C connection, but it isn't as cut and dry as that. Although the 40 gigabit per second version of USB 4 is going to have USB Type-C on either end, if you use other cables or the other versions of USB 4 that are going to be available, you will be downgrading that speed. By that, what I mean is USB 4 is actually going to be available in diff three different versions. There's going to be a 10 gigabits per second version, a 20 gigabits per second version, and a 40 gigabits per second version. These lesser versions are going to be, you know, available for, you know, smartphone devices, basically devices that don't need that um, tremendous amount of power because they're media and also because they're just not able to adapt to that USB 4 standard. Now on top of that, I say USB-C only, only the 40 gigabits per second version is gonna have USB Type-C on either end. Although you're gonna be able to use other cables, it will dramatically reduce that speed. And it's only that new USB Type-C connection that can deliver that, uh, that kind of speed. It's gonna be Thunderbolt 3 compatible apparently, but there's still no confirmation about Intel's position and Thunderbolt 3 on this. They say it's possible in the same way that Thunderbolt 3 supports USB 3.1 Gen 2 in some cases. So it will come down to Intel to decide with their chipset on different motherboards and devices whether they will allow this potentially rivaling 40 gigabits per second transmission connection to run on those desired systems. So do bear that in mind. With these multiple versions that are gonna be available in 10, 20, and 40 gig, it's worth mentioning that thanks to that backwards compatibility, you will be able to get full speed from those devices, but only the maximum speed they deliver. So a USB 3 device, a USB 3.1 Gen 1 even, uh, which is five gigabits per second, well, you won't be able to get more than that in that connection, so do bear that in mind. Don't get me wrong, when hubs start coming out, then you know you might see multiple connections all taking advantage and getting their own maximum speed each. But again, don't think the USB 4 is gonna completely reinvent your speeds on your existing systems. On top of that, there's gonna be dynamic file handling, which is pretty good, where the things that you're gonna be accessing over USB 4, the amount of speed you get from them will differ greatly. So what you get with USB 4, if you're connecting, for example, to a 5K monitor, you might be getting 12, 15 gigabits per second out of that. You might have a storage device also connected by USB 4 via a daisy chain or a hub device. What it'll allow is the cable to adjust the amount of speed for both of them and open up the bandwidth to the other. In real terms, what that means is if you've got this much bandwidth and only this much is being used by the storage, it won't just separate the whole thing down the middle and the other device loses out. It will give the dynamic, it will maximize the speed on connected devices fluidly as needed. Now, the last point that may be a huge area of contention for a number of you is to do with the naming policies of USB 3.2. USB 3.2 we talked about on the channel a little while ago, but it's worth revisiting again because they've submitted a white paper and officially, although let's face it, a number of us are gonna ignore it, the naming standards have changed again. So USB 3.1 Gen 1, which is five gigabits per second, is now going to be renamed USB 3.2 Gen 1. I know, it's super annoying. USB 3.1 Gen 2, that 10 gigabits per second transmission connection, is now going to be USB 3.2 Gen 2. And finally, the new fastest version, USB 3.2, which is 20 gigabits per second, is going to be USB 3.2 Gen 2 times 2, or X2. 
they've submitted this, and I know a number of you are going to completely ignore this in the same way you ignore 3.1 Gen 1, and I do not blame you. And we'll be producing a video very shortly that covers the entire spectrum of USB, and I look forward to telling you about that. But otherwise, this has been a super annoying video about USB 4. I hope this has some help to you, and if you're like me, you're at your wit's end with this now. Let me know in the comments what you think. Do you agree with this? Do you disagree with this? Are you going to ignore it? Let me know in the comments. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.